Hey there, Danny here. Welcome to my ramblings. Um, I'm going to share with you, I'm going to try to be as, as real as I possibly can on this channel. Um, and I'm sharing my things with you in hopes that maybe it'll help you. If not, then maybe you'll find some humor in my craziness. Anyways, um, it was about three years ago. I had just gotten out of a, a very toxic relationship. Um, I was starting over from scratch. And I, I that wasn't my first time. I've done it several times over. So for me, it was like, whatever. I can do it my way this time. I was all right with it. But I'm told by a lot of people that I know that I'm really good at giving advice. But one of my old friends, AJ, had told me one time that I'm not so good at taking my own. So his words have sat in the back of my brain for a long, long time. And at this point, I decided, okay, what would I tell my friend if she were in this position? And I started telling myself that stuff. And the first thing that I would have told my friend is, well, let's review what keeps you going with these types of guys. Because the one constant is you. And that common denominator is probably what we need to fix to change the pattern. And so this is where I started. I started reviewing things and I started reading and, and, and watching videos and talking to my great friend, Jen. And I remember I called her up uh, one night and I had always known this. I just was in denial and didn't want to own it up to myself. Um, but I called her up one night and I said, okay, I'm, I'm ready to admit that I'm codependent and I need to figure out how to stop. And I learned and I dug into it and I vowed that I was going to stay single. I, I vowed that I was going to stay single for a year once I got into my own place. And during that year... The more I started looking at the patterns and, and, and where I could make changes and where I needed to make changes, I decided I can't just take a year off of dating. I thought, uh-uh. So I always joked with everybody that my picker was off because I didn't pick the best guys. Um, they were Most of them were all the self-proclaimed good guy. I'm a good guy. I'm a nice guy. Um, <laughs> but I said, until I can figure out how to recalibrate my picker, I, I can't, I, I can't date. It's not fair to me. It's not fair to somebody else that I'm going to get involved in. And I really wanted to move into a relationship where it was with another adult, where it was with somebody that was at my mental, emotional, spiritual level. Um, so until I figured out how to do that, I gave up dating and <laughs> I started thinking about things and then I get stuck and then I would just, I, 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 I just, all right, that's it. Let go. Let God, I, I, I'm not going to try to do this anymore. I'm going to think of something else. And I would for a period of time and then something would happen or or I'd have some weird, strange dream or something. And uh, I remember this one particular dream that I had, um, which wasn't too long ago. It was only maybe, I don't know, a, a couple of months ago. I was driving the RV and there was somebody with me in the passenger seat. I don't know who it was. Um, we were going to make a left-hand turn and the light changed quickly and I went to avoid hitting a car so I made a, a, a sharper turn and I put us on our side and I remember going oops and looking over at whoever was in the passenger seat and laughing like oh well it was no big deal well it would be a really big deal if you tipped over a class A RV but if you tipped it over in reality what are you going to do you're crying, not getting mad. None of that's gonna gonna change where you're sitting at. So let's just deal with it and, and and move on. So I think after that dream, 
And I started thinking about it because, well, I do DoorDash. So I'm out in my car all day by myself doing, you know, deliveries. So I got a lot of time to think. So I'm thinking and it hits me and I'm like, I want a man that's not going to be grumpy and judgmental. Whoever was in that passenger seat was not judgmental. He's like, well, all right, we'll just get it fixed. And as I've gone through this process, I've learned, I've learned that no is a complete statement, that I had boundaries. I just didn't enforce them. And because I was a forgiving person, um, I tended to give more chances than they ever deserved. Not saying that I was an angel through it all. I mean, when you're when you're in a relationship that's not healthy, you tend to exhibit some unhealthy characteristics too. Um, but I didn't do those things with other relationships, only in a significant other type of situation. So this forced me to really look at this. And I've discovered my picker's not off. It's not off at all. My boundaries were not set in stone. They were set in sand. And sand's movable. So I've spent the last few years enforcing my boundaries and um, deciding on which ones can be compromised with and which ones can't be and I have not dated yet it's been a little over three years um I never thought that I'd be okay with being alone because prior to deciding to start this this endeavor of not dating and figuring out why the picker was broken um <clears throat> I hadn't, once I started dating, once I was 14, I, I, I hadn't been single longer than nine months ever. That was the longest I'd ever been single. There was always, there was always somebody. Um, shortly after I'd break up with somebody, it wouldn't be long before somebody else would show up or they would have already been there or whatever. Um, should have been my clue, right? Duh. We do better when we know better. Um, so... I had been struggling and I knew I've known for a few months that I'm really really close I remember calling my girlfriend Jen up sometime in September or October and saying I think I'm almost ready to start dating she goes good good she goes you'll know when it's time and so I, I kind of knew it was getting closer and it was getting closer and there was one last hurdle to get over. And I couldn't figure out for the life of me what that hurdle was. And I'm going back over all of the relationships I've been in and, and everything else. And this morning, I had the alarm set for 8 a.m. It went off. I decided, eh, I don't have to be up this early if I don't want. I'm going to sleep for another half an hour. So I set the alarm for another 30 minutes. And you know how you go, like, you're not fully asleep, but you're not really awake either. You're just kind of there in this, this weird state. And all of a sudden, my brother kept popping in my head. Now, to give you a little backstory here, my brother's very narcissistic. He thinks about nobody but himself. Um, he's, he's, uh loud and obnoxious and he thinks that if he can yell the loudest to make the biggest scene that you're going to give in to what he wants um while my mother was sick and and dying um he made my life a living hell um he didn't help any situation at all with any of it and my god sent aunt sharon came over and spent three and a half weeks with mom and I to help take care of her because, well, 
she was getting medicine every hour and a half to two hours and I was getting no sleep. And when he and Sharon got there, um, she got to see firsthand exactly what the hell had been going on. She said something to me that always stuck with me and, and, and it, it really, it touched my soul and, 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 and my heart and I just wanted to hold on to it. So she told me, you know what your brother's going to do before he does it. She goes, I don't know how you know it, but you do. She says, you're going to find a man someday and you're going to be ha You're going to have your happy ever after. She says, anytime you meet a guy and you're with him and he starts showing you any resemblance to your brother, she says, run. Okay, that's good advice. So I started keeping that in mind. I shared it with everybody I knew just so then I could like seal it into my brain. Thanks, Aunt Sharon. And um, so with that said, I had these like half awake, half asleep. And I had this, my brother, certain things that happened, not necessarily just when mom was sick and dying, but, but over the lifetime of dealing with him, certain things. And I'd kind of wake up a little bit and then realize that it wasn't time to get up yet. I still had time left on the arm, so I'd doze back off again. And then there'd be another uh, memory of him that would pop. And it, it was weird. So when I got up this morning, um, I took the dogs out. I did our morning routine. I showered. And I'm leaving for work. And... Um, <laughs> I drive around anywhere between eight to 11 hours a day <clears throat> by myself. So there's a lot of time to think. So I'm driving around and I'm listening to different, different things on YouTube while I'm driving and all of a sudden it clicks. That's it. That's it. I'm done. Those memories popped back in my brain when I was in a semi-conscious state. And it was reminding me. It was reminding me of what my Aunt Sharon said. And when I looked at that, as I was driving down the road, I realized I just released anything that I was holding on to from any of my exes. Everything that, that ever happened is all in the past. I'm, I, I, I've never felt so free as I did today. I, I had a huge smile on my face saying hello to everybody I passed, good day, and everything else. Um, I was really shocked. I kind of, I kind of felt, um, you know how you're like holding like a really heavy backpack for a long period of time and you like take it off and you're just like, oh, I feel so much lighter. But at the same, ex at the same extent, you're kind of like worn down because you're like, oh, I can finally relax. I don't have to use all my muscles to hold that heavy weight up. Well, that's kind of what it was for me today. So that weight came off me and I felt lighter, but my whole body was like, oh, we just need to rest. So, if you keep dating the same type of people, doesn't matter if they look the same or anything like that, if the relationships tend to be the same, you need to step back and you need to ask yourself, what do you need to change? Does your pecker need to be recalibrated? I still haven't found a video that shows me how to do that, but I don't need it anymore because the truth is my boundaries are solid. I know what I will compromise on and I know what I will not compromise on. And I'm back on the market and uh, I'm not actively on any dating apps or anything like that, but I'm not going to turn down a date if it comes along. And if the guy tends to remind me of anything of my brother bye and move along i've had a few um since i've been back here um since mom passed i've had a few guys that i've 
I've swapped numbers with. <laughs> that didn't go very well. <laughs> One was a nudist um, who liked um, reclaiming <laughs> his woman. So swinging was in there somewhere. Not really my cup of tea. Um, and then I had one that just wanted to move really fast. I'm not looking. I'm not looking for nothing speedy and fast. Because you know what? You don't have time to get to know each other. You really don't. I want to get to know this person before I decide to make a commitment with them. And to move in and all the rest of that stuff. Well, dude, that's got to be a ways down the way. I, I, I got to know for a fact that we can handle being together a large amount of time before I'm going to say, yeah, okay, let's live in the same place 24-7. I mean, that's stressful. And that's what we do in our society now. We jump into these relationships and, and we, we move in together right away. And How can we not see that this is going to go sideways? How can we not see that this is... This is not going to turn out proper. So, I had a joke with my mom when I decided to quit dating. Uh, mom said, well, are you all right if you were single for the rest of your life? And I said, yeah, I, I, I could be okay with being single for the rest of my life. I actually I actually enjoy, I enjoy my own space and my own time. So, that's kind of one of the fears that I had of dating again because I don't know how I'm going to fit somebody into that at this point. But that'll get worked out when that time comes. So I used to joke with my mom and I used to say that that's it. I'm done dating, mom. I I I'm done. My picker is off. God is just going to have to drop this man into my home and say, here, this is the man I have for you. And at that point, we'll move forward. <laughs> I said, otherwise, I'm done. I'm not looking. And I didn't. So it was this running joke that he'd have to just fall into my apartment. Well, then I got the RV and my great friend Mitchell, my greatest cheerleader of them all, uh, says, well, wouldn't that be kind of funny? You know, you're out camping somewhere and one of those hot air balloons or something lands on the top of your RV and dude falls in and I'm like, okay, really? <laughs> Can happen. Likelihood's very slim to none, but all right, I got what his point was. Anyways, I just wanted to share with you guys where I'm at. And I'm sure that there's a lot of other people out there who keep getting in these, these revolving door relationships that, that they just don't turn out right. And it, it takes two to tango, yes. But are we taking the time to really get to know somebody? And the one thing that I really realized over this, this break that I've taken is I don't want, I, I don't want to be told what I look like. I don't. Because for most of the people that I've dated and married, it was because I looked good on their arm. That's an insult to me. I value somebody's soul and their heart more than I do their external. The truth is, I can't find beauty in another human being until I know their heart and soul. Because you could be the most gorgeous human being on this planet. And if your heart and soul are shit, you're shit. And I will never be able to see you as anything other than that. So, here's the taking time, getting to know somebody, and enjoying life. Again, got any topics or anything else you want to talk about, feel free to put it down in the comments. Or anything else, then uh, we'll talk to you later. Night.